When I was a reckless teenager, I strove for the attention of others. I was a popular kid, like a brother to most people. I was in with cliques like the jocks, the nerds, and even the normal kids like me, except the stoners. The stoners were a bunch of kids who were considered weird by everyone in the school. They were all guys, except one girl, who was abused by her father and turned to drugs to control her pain. They all laughed when I messed up. If I ever tried to talk to them, they just smirked at me like I was some damn fool. They used to just hang out and listen to Pink Floyd and other rock bands. When I told my friends that the stoners didn't like me that much, they told me not to worry, and that the stoners are all just cynical and depressed assholes who have nothing better to do. I wanted to prove myself to them, show them that I'm not some jock, that I would earn their friendship. Now that I think of it, I was kind of insecure back then. I used to point out the flaws of others and did the same things myself. One day I had enough. I went up to them and told them I wanted some LSD. At first they laughed at me. They thought I was joking. I stared at them with a determined face and their smiles turned into frowns. They sold me some for a hundred bucks, pretty cheap. I went home and waited for my parents to go to bed so I could take it. I put it on my tongue and let it dissolve. It took less time than I expected. I waited an hour staring at the shows on TV. Soon there was a white light coming from the floorboards. It felt warm, like the feeling when you put your hand near a light bulb. I went to get a crowbar out of the garage. I got the board loose and looked down. I saw a ladder and went down it. I walked down a long dirt corridor with a stone path. I saw a doorway with the sign, Harvest Area 22, Authorised Personnel Only. I walked through the door into a hallway with three doors. I went through the middle one and went through another long, dirty corridor. It felt like an eternity. I had wished it was. I saw thousands of pink, humanoid creatures with clumps and pockets of skin. They had glowing yellow eyes, sharp mangled teeth, and long bony arms. They all walked with a hunch, almost dragging their nails along behind them. They looked confused, sad, and scared. Those hundreds of soldiers with large assault rifles. I could see the flags of the United States, Russia and Great Britain. The soldiers wore black, red and blue uniforms with gas masks on. The creatures all stopped and looked up at me. Thousands of glowing yellow eyes. I ran. I ran as fast as I could away from that place and went into my father's room. I didn't care if he was awake. I went to his closet and grabbed his shotgun and waited downstairs, aiming at the floorboard. I heard a sick growling noise. It was coming closer. Its footsteps echoed down the long corridor. I had my finger pressed tightly against the trigger. One of the creatures came up the ladder. It looked directly at me as if it was looking into my very soul. I tried to talk to it. I asked it if it needed any help, but all it could say was, coming. More footsteps echoed, sounded like hundreds of them. Then the gunshots came. It sounded like a massacre. The screams of those things still in my head. The creature looked as if it was about to cry. I heard a voice yell, halt, then the sound of footsteps came towards the ladder. It felt so real, I just remembered I was on LSD. A soldier emerged out of the hole with a large revolver. He pointed it at the creature and pulled the trigger. The lime green blood splattered all over me. The soldier threw the mangled body of the creature down the ladder. 
he said. We will send a crew to clean this in the morning. Take this. He handed me a small pocket knife with the number 22 on the side of it. For your protection. The soldier went back down the hole and disappeared. I went to bed, scared and alone. The next morning I woke up and went down to eat breakfast. I saw the living room was still intact after last night. I was sure now it was a trip. I took the bus to school. I saw the stoner girl and said thanks about giving me the LSD. You realise that they pulled a prank on you, right? They gave you sugar tablets. The images of last night went through my head. The creatures. The soldiers. What had happened? I went home after school, tore up my room, and found a knife with the number 22 on the side. My first toad was an Incilius alvarius, a Colorado river toad, a fidgety fucker that slipped out of my hands the moment I grabbed him. After a bit of back and forth though, I managed to wrap my mittens around him and give him a big old smooch on the back. I could hear my friend Kermit, yes, that's his real name, get over it, yelling at me in the distance, but it was already too late. As it turns out, there's a certain skill required to lick toads safely, and unless you want to end up fucking dead, you better be careful when you tongue wash those little bastards. Well, I'm not dead. But right now, straight up truth shooting, I kinda wish I was. Anyway, Kermit knew how to handle Bufo toxin overdoses, so he got me sorted. But I'll never forget the all-consuming anxiety that overcame me as I tripped balls having been told there's a real chance that I might just keel over and snuff it. Point is, I've learnt my lesson. I know my toads now. Or that is to say, I know most toads now. So when Kermit called me up, mid-isolation, to ask me if I'd received the toad yet, I must admit I was a little bit confused, but also mildly intrigued. Man, you got it yet? Have you tried it? What the fuck are you on about, Kerm? I asked. The toad, he whispered. The toad. Look, it doesn't matter which word you emphasise, I still don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Man, you ain't got it yet? Shit, you're in for a nice one. You're tripping right now, aren't you? Oh, fuck yes, he spat. It's like, man, I don't... It's like I've licked God's balls, man. Like my brain is vibrating in and out of existence, and my eyes, my body... the. The things you feel, man, it's like the thing they say, you know, writing about music is like dancing about architecture, and man, I'm dancing about architecture like you wouldn't fucking believe. Alright, alright, it's good shit, I sighed, but I still don't have it. Rob should be there soon, he murmured. Shit, fuck, what was that? Man, I gotta go, there's a huge ass celery trying to fuck my fridge. Wait. I considered calling him back, but knowing Kermit on a trip, I knew it'd be no use. So instead I sat down by the window with a cigarette to see if I could catch a glimpse of Rob. Now Rob had been arrested half a dozen times carrying toads for Kermit, but they could never prove it was with an intent to distribute, so it always got off with just an intent to lick. But even those stack up though, so these days he was being real careful with his toad mewling to such an extent that he suddenly appeared behind me. Kerm sent me, Rob said hoarsely. Jesus fucking across, I exclaimed quite blasphemously. He shrugged. Sorry man, gotta be careful. The topo has been on me like a fly to a frog's tongue lately. Fuck me man, I gasped. You're getting too good at this. Thanks, here's your toad, he said, handling me a plastic container. But I gotta say, man, I wouldn't touch that thing if I were you. Why? I asked, eyeing the container suspiciously. He shuffled around nervously. 
It's not like any toad I've ever seen, he said. It's freaky as fuck. What do you mean? I mean what I just said, he edged away slowly. Just take my word for it, Leo. Throw that fucking thing in the toilet and don't stop flushing until your arm is sore. And with those ominous parting words, he was gone. Rob was a nice enough guy, but he was also unbelievably paranoid. Comes with the toad mewling territory, I suppose. In any case, we all sort of ignored him when he went all chemtrails on us, so I didn't really give it much thought before I'd unboxed the toad. I'm not sure if I actually said anything, but when I think back to that exact moment, I'm sort of outside of my body, watching my dry, cracked lips motion a good old, what the fuck? The toad, if in fact was a toad, wasn't a toad. That's the kind of fucked up paradoxical shit we're dealing with here. It was toad shaped, sure. The legs, the exterior glands, the dry skin. Oh man, the skin. That's what made me take a step back initially. I've seen toads in all shapes, sizes and colours, but never, never one that had a human skin complexion. Why is that so off-putting? Why does that imagery make the bile rise in my throat? I don't know man, it just does. Human skin complexion or not, I was still convinced that it was a toad at this point. So I shook my head and swallowed deeply, taking a step forward to get a good look at the little bugger. What the? And this time I'm sure I actually said it. Fuck? The step forward was immediately followed by multiple stumbling steps backward, until I realised I was uselessly bumping into the wall over and over again. Human skin and a human face. That's the combination that had me stumbling around in fear, knocking things over right, left and centre, hyperventilating into pillows, mugs, empty beer bottles, splashing my face continuously with icy cold water, until I finally collapsed under the crushing weight of all the insanity. Face, I mumbled to myself. Face. I fumbled for my phone. I had it somewhere, didn't I? It's always on you, isn't it? Like an extended body part, always within arm's reach. Ah, the pocket, always in the last place you look. With trembling fingers, I called up Kermit, never once letting my sweat-stinging eyes stray too far away from the harrowing container. Leo, a voice that was definitely not Kermit spoke. Leo, is that you? K k I stammered incoherently. Kermit? Don't do it, Leo. The raspy voice murmured. Don't touch it. Kerm? Don't. Kerm? He was gone. Quite literally at that point, I suspect. My mind raced, a thousand thoughts fighting for the floor at once. Not a single one potent enough to grab the cerebral microphone. Goddamn useless fuckers. Rob, I whispered. Toilet. Flush it. Flush it until your arm is sore. I nodded to myself internally. A shaking, adrenaline fueled body rising to its feet, shambling in the general direction of the container. Why? I thought. Why the fuck did I open it? Now I'd have to see that hideous fucking creature one more time, and I really wasn't up for that. Arriving at the container, I was greeted by the horrid irony of my own thoughts. It took a second or two in the mental void before my mind caught up to reality, but when it did I seriously, severely, desperately wanted nothing more than to see the non-toad once more. It was gone. But where? How? I never let my eyes off it. I swore it. I swear it. Then I felt something landing on my neck. Something big, muscular with bloaty slug veins fat enough for me to feel its heart pumping. I let out a panic shriek, momentarily paralysed when I failed to recognise my own animalistic howl before diving to the floor instinctively. But, much like my very first experience smooching a toad, it was too late. The toxin, 
whatever it was, Bufotin and psilocybin, DMT, God's balls, slapped me into the hallucinogenic beyond in an instant. Unlike Kermit though, it didn't feel like I was dancing about architecture at all, soon enough drifting into a waking nightmare. I lost control of my body, and I could do nothing as I witnessed my flesh becoming one with the floor. I could feel my brain spreading like mushy goo, slithering cerebral tendrils stretching to cover the entirety of my shitty apartment. A feeling of impending doom dominated everything, like perpetual death. Shitty as that may be though, it didn't even come close to being the worst part of my day. I could feel it, you know. The toad. It crawled all over me while I was woefully incapacitated, and fuck me if it wasn't the worst sensation I've ever had the displeasure of living through. Wart-like glands rubbing all over my skin, most likely releasing more of the toxins by the second. At some point, while I was somehow enjoying the sight of my own eyes slowly melting, it slithered over my face rolling down onto the floor, facing me directly. And then it smiled. And that's still not the worst part, although it was fucking horrendous. A human-skinned, human-faced, human-eyed, human-toothed toad smiling at you. Pray to whichever fucking deity you worship that you don't ever have to face that. The endlessly flowing toxins soon became overwhelming, and I slowly felt my mind drowning in a heavy mist, of which soon became too powerful to fight. My last memories of the toad smirking, a set of vividly blue eyes staring into mine. It's strange, you know. I felt almost peaceful, like I welcomed death. I woke up hours later with a headache that I suspect closely resembles being stabbed repeatedly from inside the brain with a fucking corkscrew. I could hardly move at all, but when my memories returned to me, particularly the memory of the toad, I somehow managed to stumble to my feet, exiting in the apartment in a post-trip haze. No, I haven't gotten to the worst part yet, but it's coming. I think I was halfway into my car when I noticed it. My skin. Look, there's this myth about touching toads, right? It's like the spider myth. Like how on average a spider lays eight eggs in your mouth nightly or something. Only it has to do with warts. Touch a toad, grow warts. It doesn't work like that though. I've practiced toadylingus for the better part of a decade now. And I haven't got a single wart to show for it. Well, unless you count the hundreds I've suddenly sprouted overnight. They're not warts though, I think. I'm no dermatologist, but they're not supposed to be this fucking big, I think. Like cysts, I guess. Warty, pus-filled cysts. No, that's not the worst part still. You see, when I looked closer, there was something about them. Something inside them something moving inside them. Once I realised what I was looking at, I felt the need to start cutting them open, one by one, dragging the little fuckers out of there. Yeah, I've seen them before. I even had a fish tank full of them at one point. Not this particular species though, but they're all the same to some extent. Tiny, human-faced tadpoles.